Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a sci-fi horror film, Ultraviolet. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in a high-tech world with some fighters attacking a lab out of nowhere. Big black spheres pierce through the building, shattering glasses everywhere. With such speed, the black spheres transform into dark fighters. These dark fighters use swords as their primary weapon. They then assassinate every doctor they see in the building, treating them like butchered chickens. The dark fighters quickly go inside a massive room and survey the area. Suddenly, they realize it is a trap, and many soldiers from every direction shoot them without mercy, causing the trespassing dark fighters to die seconds after showering with deadly bullets. After the successful trap, one of the doctors checks the mouth of the dead fighter. After seeing the fangs, he confirms that the group that attacked them are hemophages, creatures that are way stronger, smarter, and more powerful than humans. It is also revealed that hemophages are originally humans with mutated DNA, caused by some unique virus. The head doctor wonders what is the motive of their attack if they do not have the plan to escape. The assistant theorizes that they may want to infect all the blood kept in the building. The head doctor realizes that he has touched the blood of one of the hemophages. Knowing this, the assistant shoots the poor man to death without hesitation, before the doctor can even infect someone with the virus. In the next scene, the main character, Violet, narrates how the virus came alive. She says that the military wanted stronger soldiers, so they created a virus that could make humans stronger. However, she also says that it quickly backfires when the virus becomes a very contagious form of the disease. Because of the virus threat, the health department created policies regulating the people. However, with the never-ending pandemic, Violet says that people have already stopped following the rules. She also says that she contracted the virus when she was pregnant. As a result, Violet lost her husband and her unborn child. This implies that Violet is a hemophage herself. But Violet says that she never stopped resisting. She created an underground movement and began fighting back against the oppressive stay up to this day. She also narrates that it was the time when the blood war began. In the next scene, Violet introduces the vice cardinal called Daxus, who is currently in control of the world. They plan to eradicate all the hemophages from this world. Daxus says they have been developing a deadly weapon that would kill all the hemophages instantly. Next, Violet rides her Tesla motorcycle and goes to a medical lab to infiltrate. The military checks her identity thoroughly. She introduces herself as XPD-154 as she removes her helmet, which reveals that Violet has bright violet hair and a killer instinct in her eyes. After the inspection, Violet's hair suddenly changes to black. Going inside the building, Violet is immediately greeted by doctors and armed soldiers. The doctor then asks her to sit in the chair so that they can conduct the test to reveal if Violet is a pure human or a hemophage. Suddenly, Violet is locked in the chair, and sophisticated apparatuses are attached to her, testing her DNA. Fortunately, the test results become clear, and Violet successfully disguises herself as a human. It is revealed that Violet is tasked to steal the anti-mutant weapon made by humans in the medical lab. To make this possible, she disguises herself as a courier. In the next scene, the real XPD-154 comes to the lab. Because of the double identity, the soldiers are alert and wonder which one is real. Not long after, the whole lab announces a security breach. Violet then uses her martial skills to fight the enemies by herself. She hopes to steal the anti-mutant weapon safely. With her mutant skills, she simply overpowers every soldier. She dodges every bullet and kills the soldiers in perfect coordination. The scene continues as she kicks, slashes, and punches the poor soldiers to their end. It's also revealed that Violet altered her DNA temporarily, which is why she infiltrated the building successfully. Another group of soldiers comes to the scene. As expected, Violet shoots them like they are chicken meat. Up until now, no humans could even touch her sexy body. She says to the authorities that she hates humans with all her heart and would try to kill every single one of them. Violet then escapes the building in style. She uses her gun to defy gravity and levitates to the roof. However, she finds herself cornered by armed soldiers as soon as she gets out of the building. She slashes every single one of them at such speed. She goes back to her Tesla motorcycle and drives away, with success in stealing one of the anti-mutant weapons. Violet's comrade, Nerva, says on the phone that she should destroy the weapon if anything bad happens. The soldiers are still chasing Violet, hoping to catch her. Fortunately, with her gravity-defying powers and driving skills, she dodges every bullet by a hinch. She jumps into the chopper and goes to destroy the remaining helicopter that has been following her. To know where she could escape, she talks with Nerva. After confirming the location, she finally escapes and goes to the hideout. Curious, she opens the case containing a weapon, only to find that a smelly child is strangely locked inside it. 
Returning to their hideout, her comrades commend her for the successful mission. However, Violet says that what she stole is not a weapon, but a child. But Nerva says that the child could also be the weapon the enemies are talking about, and that the child's blood contains an antigen that would kill all hemophages alive. With the child's threat to the hemophages, Nerva wants to kill him immediately. However, Violet reasons that he is only a child and should not be killed. She leaves the room immediately, taking the child with her. On the roof of the building, Violet is cornered by the enemies. In every direction, a gun is pointed at her sexy body. As one of the enemies shoots her chest without hormone mercy, she retracts and dodges every attack. She fights and puts everyone in their place, knocking them all out. Violet then sees the child thinking if he should jump on the building and kill himself. Fortunately, she can reach his hand and save him from killing himself. However, terror does not end as the enemies, regardless of the soldiers or the hemophages, chase her closely after her smell. The commotion stops when Vice Cardinal Daxus comes to the scene and talks with Violet. Daxus bargains to have the child back and he will let her escape. But Violet refuses to do it and makes one last push to escape all the way to the underground train. During the rest, Violet tells the child that she's saving him because his blood could be the cure for their unique disease caused by the virus infection. Unfortunately, Violet's other comrades are not able to help her. Violet explains everything to the child about the war between humans and hemophages and the importance of his blood. She tries to persuade the child to willingly cooperate with them to save the world and cure everyone infected with the disease. After that, Violet finds her remaining medical comrade for help. She asks the medical expert to inspect the child and to know more about him. Meanwhile, another group of hemophages meets Daxus face to face. However, Daxus uses a unique weapon that can easily kill the three hemophages. But Daxus leaves Nerva alive to discuss with him. Violet talks about her childhood to the boy. She reminisces about the peaceful days of her life before becoming a mutant and reveals that she is dying. This implies that hemophages have shorter lives than humans. Besides that, Violet describes to the boy the most important things in life and how the disease took them away from her the day she got infected. After the melodrama, the expert reveals that the boy's blood cannot be used to create a cure. Therefore, the child is useless for hemophages. He also says that the child has a tracking device installed into him and is currently radioactive. What's more, the boy is already dying because of everything the humans put into his body. Violet says goodbye to the expert and leaves the area with the boy to ensure that the tracking device does not trace his hideout. In the next scene, Violet and the boy separate. In no time, the soldier traces the boy while Violet tries to disguise herself with the humans. However, Violet cannot take it in her heart to leave the poor child alone. She rushes back to save the boy. However, as soon as she sees him, Nerva suddenly gets hold of the child. Violet is outnumbered, and Nerva successfully takes the boy from her. She initiates a fight with Nerva's underlings. Unlike fighting humans, Violet struggles because she's fighting people with the same power as she has, but her experience in battle makes her successful in beating the two guards. She then heads inside the hideout to save the boy. As soon as she enters, she sees many strong hemophages. Nerva plans to kill the boy so that his threat to hermophages will be gone. But Violet takes her sword and prepares to fight. Nerva reasons why they should kill the child. He says the kid is originally a human antigen rather than a hemophage antigen. After thinking for a while, Violet insists on saving the child as she flexes her sword in front of everyone. Nerva orders all of his underlings to attack Violet. However, it is ineffective as Violet knocks them all out instantly. As a reaction, Nerva drops the boy and hangs him. Nerva's much stronger underlings come to the scene to fight, but Violet still overpowers them easily. She is now worried about the safety of the child. After Violet slashes her way through the enemies, Nerva has no choice but to fight back. While in the zone, Violet can pierce her sword through Nerva's neck, killing him. She then takes hold of the rope, carrying the child, hoping to save the boy. Fortunately, she can get him back, which saves him from impending death. Violet reveals to him that whatever the humans put on his body will eventually kill him. She promises him she will try fixing everything up. Next, Violet contacts Daxus and confronts him. She wants Daxus to take out everything the humans put in the boy's body. However, Daxus says that it is impossible and demands Violet bring the boy back to him. Daxus laughs at the poor situation of Violet and the boy, both of them soon to be dying. Violet then plans to infiltrate Daxus' hideout. Daxus tries to scare her by saying that he has more than 700 soldiers willing to protect him and that Violet would not have a single chance to win, but Violet is firm that she can kill every single one of them. Violet rides a car, ready to go into the biggest battle of her life. 
The boy says that Violet only has two choices, watch him die and die trying to save him. The scene then flashes the great military power of Daxus, ready to confront Violet. Without fear, Violet gets out of her car to show herself. Daxus then asks her if she is losing herself, going into a fight with hundreds of soldiers. Violet still demands a cure for the child's disease. She does not believe a single thing Daxus has been saying that the boy has no cure. Daxus then reveals his new plan to wipe the human race out instead of himophages. He's becoming impatient and wants the child back as soon as possible. The battle then begins. Because of her inhumane strength and her bulletproof hormone mountains, she can block all of the bullets fired into her like nothing. It is revealed that what Violet has shown is only her decoy and she is somewhere safe. The boy tells her that she's simply outnumbered and has no chance of defeating them. The next scene flashes a perspective of Violet and the boy living happily together. This reveals that Violet did not pursue the great battle. Instead, she chooses to live her remaining days with the boy. However, while playing, she realizes that the boy is already dying of his condition. She bawls in sorrow and mourns for the boy's death. Right then, Daxus comes to the scene and collects the boy's body, while Daxus shoots Violet's back, intending to kill her. Fortunately, Violet wakes up. It reveals that her friend, the medical expert, manages to revive her from death. However, Violet does not want to live anymore. She says she doesn't want to do the same thing again and again. Depressed, she plans to kill herself with a gun until the expert contacts her through her phone. The expert says that the boy wrote something in the paper before he passed away and believes that it has something to do with the virus. Curious about it, Violet asks the expert where he is. She says that she believes that the boy is still alive, but the expert says that the kid is dead and that what the boy wrote in the paper could be the cure for their disease. The expert promises that he will cure the disease suffered by every hemophage, but Violet refuses to hear him and proceeds to infiltrate the enemy's base again. In the lab, it is revealed that Daxus plans to reculture the cure into another clone. Violet walks into the building and wants to confront Daxus. The whole building is put on alert once detecting Violet's presence. Daxus cannot believe in his life that Violet is still alive. As expected, Violet overpowers all the human guards and kills all of them easily. Another platoon of soldiers comes, but Violet just shoots and slashes all of them to death in style. Violet continues infiltrating the building, killing everyone in front of her. Finally, after all the bloodshed, Violet finds Daxus. Daxus then insists that the boy is dead. Not having patience anymore, the both of them start a decisive duel. Daxus' power reveals that he is also secretly a hemophage. It's further revealed that Daxus intentionally created the virus so as to earn power and economic wealth by selling its vaccines. It also implies that the boy is important to him because he is the key to his diabolical plans. As Daxus turns the light off, both of them light their sword while fighting in the dark. Violet struggles to fight as she's injured, but her will to fight back makes her continue. Violet sneaks into Daxus' back and shoots her flamethrower, making Daxus burn. Daxus screams at the top of his chicken lungs as he slowly experiences a painful death. After the victory, Violet immediately takes the boy's body and wakes him up. However, Violet's body is now starting to self-destruct due to her short lifespan. Fortunately, the boy says they have found the cure and they happily leave the area to return to their comrades. After the bloody decisive duel, Violet promises that she will eradicate every person that spreads oppression in society. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.